Let's see all the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We have Ezekiel Nyai Tok. Uh, uh, of course, his, his title, he likes to be addressed as the Otoe Kong. And you would only understand if you're from that part of the country. Otoe Kong, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Actually, Otoe Kong is one of the highest titles you could have. It's like Are Onaka Kam for. It's like the general. <laughs> it's one of the biggest titles you can have in uh, within the um, the video and the sector. So, the general. Thank yeah. you for joining us. <laughs> It's all right. We set up with the Punch newspaper, as always. So we'll take you through the pages of our, of our dailies, and uh, we'll run through the papers as we have, uh, as available by a paper vendor, and uh, would have great analysis and perspective to it. Let's start off with the Punch. Like I mentioned, uh, the big caption or the story you like to see, as to strike, NLC rejects Buhari's two-week ultimatum, insists on protest. Uh, that's what uh, the punch is saying this morning. NLC Fort's two-week timeline says three days enough to meet demands. Planned protests illegal Nigerian Labour Congress partisan says government. Asu says no going back on protests. Aviation workers plan strike. It feels like we, we probably might also be joining, you know, this action. Well, that's uh, the board caption and the riders you find underneath it this morning on the punch. Away from that, CBN panel worries over Niger's debt repayment capacity. EFCC, ICPC, Ford's proposed ACJA amendment. And blackout as grid collapses from 300, I beg your pardon, 3,922 megawatts to 50 megawatts. It feels like we are <laughs> a weird joke. Reps plan tax crimes uh, commission headed by IG. Again, you find uh, bakers halt bread production today over increasing cost. I mean, I'm so sorry for those who love to eat bread. Uh, another caption says, anti Shatima forces angry as Tunubu defends running mate. Again, reps probe lopsided at TCN recruitment and summons MDHOS. A delicate wins appeal and gets certificate of return. Four men gang rape Lagos school child for five days. What evil. We hope that the law is, uh, you know, justice is meted and those who are responsible for this barbaric evil act are brought to book. How Ibubwe Agu killed my seven brothers in my presence. That's quite unfortunate. What's going on in our country? Protests as Lagos land grabbers burn houses and injure resident. Oshu woman wanted for alleged burning husband over infidelity. I mean, you know, it's a story and a report that you probably would have seen. But we move away from that. We have the nation. And on the nation... Tunubu on Shatima, I have made, had, best choice. Okay, that's interesting. APC presidential candidate says 2023 poll, a must win. I won't be vice president to Muslims. Let's join hands with candidate for victory, says party chair. Buhari, show of victory. I mean, how do you even say that? It's very contradictory. Uh, you know, in the figure of speech, I would say it's an irony. You can't say that you're having a Muslim, Muslim run, a Muslim as a presidential candidate, Muslim as a vice presidential candidate. And you say that you're not going to be, you know, a president or you're not going to be cheering over, you know, Muslim. You're not just going to be for the Muslim. It's obvious. Isn't it very biased? Well, another talks about, let's join hands. I, I took that already. And you still have blackout as greed collapses to zero. Megawatt thrice in three months or in three hours, let's say zero megawatts and all the quarters are reporting 50 megawatts. Well, uh, that's what you find there. NDLEA tenders $61,400 alleged bribe cash in court. Witnesses testify against Etete in $1.3 billion Malibu oil proceeds suit. 
and Akeri Dolu orders sack of civil servant on double salaries. Oshun governor-elect deputy gets certificate. These are the headlines you find on The Nation. Away from The Nation, we have the Daily Trust newspaper. It talks about 2023. Nigerians will vote competence over sentiment. Shatima, of course, Nigerians will vote uh, competence over sentiment. That's what Nigerians have been saying. And ex borneo governor's choice had but best. Uh, that's what Tunubu is quoted to say. Could he? Could it be that you know uh, the, the flag bearer is trying to pass a message? Could it be that uh, there are forces that are responsible for this beyond the eyes of Nigerians? Eleven governors attend unveiling of running mate, and eleven orders Lawan missing. God willing, you will succeed. That's what Buhari is quoted to say. And protests at party headquarters over vice president candidate's choice. Uh, feels like there might just be a lot of commotion. Baker's closed shop today over high production cost. And that's for those in the bakery, those who make bread. So bread might just be, in case you don't see bread, you need to look for an alternative Opponents of water bill driven by parochial political interests. That's what the minister is quoted to say. As to strike hundreds to miss law school as NLS begins new session. And cargo trapped as dock workers short a papa port terminal. Everyone might just be very displeased and angry uh, protesting. TUC six salary review, 65 years retirement, aid for workers. Really? And Super Falcons boycott training over unpaid allowances. What is going on? It feels like we need to overhaul the entire country. Let's, let's press the stop button and begin to fix everything. Bandits, terrorists kill 43, abduct many in Sokoto, Katsina, and Taraba. That's it. Uh, this morning, seven siblings kidnapped in Katsina. Quite unfortunate, and two-year-old left behind after murders kidnapped. The headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper. And away from the Daily Trust, we just quickly look at the leadership now. The leadership also talked about a Muslim Muslim ticket. We were in presidential race for Nigeria. Uh, I take that again. We're in presidential race for Nigerian projects, not Islamic agenda, Shatima is quoted to say. And Nigerians are saying, and others are saying, that if that's the case, then why don't you have uh, a Christian as a vice president, so you could balance the equation. Well, God willing, I would hand over to you in 2023. Uh, president Muhammad Buhari acknowledges Candace owns bishop at unveiling of Shatima as Tunubu's running mate, says they are desperados who don't know how to wear bishop's garment. <laughs> Protests rock the APC Secretariat. There's been a lot going on. And as to strike, federal government declares plan NLC solidarity protest illegal. Why? Bread makers to shut down over high operating costs today. I'm so sorry. Uh, very saddening. Uh, you can imagine what would happen. National grid records sixth collapse in seven months. And you find we killed ESN members, not wedding guests in Emo. Uh, that's what the DSS is quoted to say. But really, the DSS would say that. What happened to uh, you being tried by a court of competence jurisdiction? Could this also be tamed as or classified as extrajudicial killing? But that's the much we could take this morning on uh, the pages that's being made available by... Uh, our vendor, we have Ezekiel Nyaito, who joins the conversation. Ezekiel, thank you so much for always making our time to be part of the breakfast. We appreciate you and your time. I uh, would like that you unmute your microphone so we can have a smooth conversation. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for, as I consider that a privilege, so I should be grateful for having me on your program. All right, then. Let's start off with the NLC and the fact that they have rejected the president's two weeks ultimatum 
and insisting that the protest would continue. That's on the punch this morning. The NLC is saying that, hey, the timeline being given, two weeks, is so much. In three days, we can sort all of this. And uh, some persons have also described, you know, the government is saying that the plant protest is illegal and the Nigerian Labour Congress is very partisan. What do you make of this? I, I think that the government is um, confused, to say the least. And um, all they need is just to get a few consultants to guide them, to direct them. That's number one. Number two, they need to just for once think of how they can be honest and sincere. Playing the ostrich and trying to beat a child and tell that child not to cry is nonsensical. It is not commonsensical. And I think that we are getting really tired. If this was just like Super Falcons missing you know, the game that we just say, oh, I, I felt so bad. The next morning you get up and move, it would be a different problem. This is about our children, our future, who have been at home for almost six months. I don't know how we understand how these things work. It goes back to jam. Those who took jam, you know, last year, where are they? Those who are taking this year, where are we going to have first year A and first year B? How are we going to do this? There's a lot of implication to all these things that we are doing. So the first thing is, you know, I, I like it when the, 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 the presidential candidate of um, African Democratic Congress, ADC, Mr. Dumebi Kachuku, held a state of the nation or state of the union address, so to speak. And he just appealed to us and said, please go back to school. These guys are lying to you. They don't have the money. They're just buying time. Come out clean and clear and say, Asu, we know that your demand is legitimate. We know that this is a situation. But please, this is where we are as a nation today. Can you just help us? Then Asu is going to tell them, I understand. I'm going to make sacrifices, but you're also going to make sacrifices. Do you need this? Do you need that? Do you need this? Do you? Because there's a lot of frivolities in government. There's a lot of reckless spending in government. And you say that you have no money, and yet your lifestyle does not depict that. So there's this disconnect between what they say and what they are. And you really can't read the mindset or the body language or the direction or that we are running as a people and as a government. Third, if they had an and a consultant that interface between them, that consultant will tell ASU, you know, the health sector has a lot of things. The housing subsector have a lot of needs. All soft sectors have a lot of needs. So they can't, if they make their demands for what is rightly theirs, Nigeria will not be able to make one point of it. That's the fact. So these are your entitlements. But these are our realities. Can we just see how we meet halfway, one way or the other? When you have that honest conversation, we will have a progress made. But when uh, uh, the federal government is on one hand grandstanding, on another hand frivolous, and on the third hand trying to bring about certain threats, I don't know when, when, when strike became illegal, you know, or protest, not even strike, when protest became illegal in a country where freedom of speech and association is guaranteed by the constitution. These are the things that our leaders just do and, and, and you wonder how they found themselves. I said somewhere, I really, I'm starting not to blame leaders again. We run a democracy. The time has come when the nation, the citizens have to take responsibility. There's something called office of decision of the state and there's a responsibility to it. All right, uh, Ezekiel Yaitouk, let's quickly look at this one, you know, at some point, looking at that headline. It's also on the punch. It dominates some of the papers. It talks about the fact that those who make bre bread are withdrawing. They're down. There's going to be a down tool. And it, it might just be, you know, a nationwide movement. Uh, they have raised some concern. And some of the issues they've talked about is that the cost of production raw materials are actually high, especially at a time where, you know, there's been a ban on importation of flour. 
and also if you look at you know the capacity of the nation to produce locally it's not even there so uh, it's not available we don't have the capacity and they're saying that hey they're going to down to now this is one we also this is not me trying to be not optimistic but it's what might likely happen there might be other sectors or uh, you know other persons who might be who would decide to down tool in no time or, or just withdraw because of you know the costs of production w what can we do i mean it feels like we're, we're going through a lot now what what exactly can we do when you look out and see the campaigning that we are carrying on starting with the uh, presidential primaries you just can't help but shake your head if people really know what's going on. All these people that want to be governors and presidents, are they aware of the state of our economy? Are they aware of the challenges that are ahead of us? We that are running around like headless chicken following these people, have we sat down to really think and profile each of these people in terms of the challenges they face have we really come to understand our position as a nation or are we living under this false pretense of a great nation and uh, you know prosperous and there look a lot of things that we are just not getting right i'm bringing you know with respect to the question you asked challenges are in every sector when I start to talk, you know, my, my, my number one area is actually housing. That's what I'm really known for without before public policies and that government. You know, if I tell you the challenges, if, you know, I'm contesting to be the governor of Ibom State. I've sat down with a team to look at the housing challenges in Ibom State. And I want to tell you on record that a hundred percent of the budget of Ibom State cannot give us the ideal housing environment that is expected of a citizen, cannot. That same 100% cannot give us health care in a way that it should be. So when you sit down and you look at the debt burden, look at the revenue, look at IGR, when you sit down and look at all these things, the first thing if you are really somebody who thinks well, is for you to think of withdrawal and running away except they're motivated by something that somebody's got to fix this problem. And then you now see your opponents spending money nearly in the billions. You see, you, you, you see the convoys on there, you know, when they are going on, on, on campaign, you, you just, just sit down sometimes and, and almost have migraine. I think the time has come when Nigerians, especially those of us that God has given the privilege to be enlightened, you know, what we call the elite. I think we really need to sit down and ask ourselves, what country are we going to have in 2023? And what can we do today? Look at the aviation. Aviation is such that, you know, look at what's happened to one of the airlines today, being suspended. People are cutting corners at the risk of life. We shouldn't, there's a problem. We are in an emergency. And Mr. President, I don't know. I, I, I'd made a promise that since he signed the electoral act, I'm not going to blame him again. But don't, you, but, but don't you think that you're being biased here? Yeah. I mean, if, if you get to that particular point, of course, it's your choice. You have a right, uh, you know, to be where it is that you should be as regards your, your thoughts and your opinion. Uh, a lot of persons still do not understand uh, the importance or, you know, what has really happened with the electoral act but a few persons actually understand and they have given accolades to the president and that's what it is. So if, if, if you have people doing good, then you uh, applaud them. If the president and his team and every other person is getting it right, he gets the accolades. And if they're not getting it right, it's okay to get the knocks. It's, it's we're in the system. I agree with you. But but let's quickly I... move away from that. It's 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 yes. uh, an aside. Now on the leadership newspaper, the Muslim Muslim ticket. Now, according to Shatima, who was unveiled yesterday, he says we're in the presidential race for Nigeria project. I take that again. We are in the presidential race for a Nigerian project, not Islamic agenda. Now, this has been the notion prior to the unveiling, prior to this time, 
uh, there's been a lot of reaction shortly after you had the APC saying, hey, we're going to have Shatisha, Shatima, Shatima. There's been uh, some people say, hey, the prominent uh, leader of Boko Haram was arrested in his lodge at the time. Uh, you have so much going on and there's a lot of worry. And they're saying that it's not a problem. We also saw some of the bishops yesterday and some of those men of God who said it, it's not a crime. There's really nothing wrong. And if you have a Muslim Muslim running or vying for the office of president 2023, that's not a problem. It's for the unity of the people. But is this statement, do you believe this thought that this is not an agenda, whether or not it's an Islamic agenda or any other agenda? Do you think that this is for the Nigerian cause? You know, there's something, if you take time and read the Bible, you find a lot of wisdom, a lot of things that are um, very inspiring. One of them is that all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. It's one of the passages that I hold dear because it helps me to analyze certain situations. As a vice president, as a president, I am liberty to appoint anybody as your vice president. Secondly, you know, as a president, that your vice president does a spare tire. As of today, the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a pastor. Not just a Christian, the pastor. But the question is, what impact have we felt as a Christian being a vice president? There are certain councils that the vice president is not party to, is not a member of. And at the highest bodies of taking decisions outside of like the Federal Executive Council which of course has both Muslims and Christians, but the decision-taking procedure of, of government, unfortunately, is not out of robust engagement of the Federal Executive Council, either at the federal level or the state executive council, but an endorsement and a, a kind of um, carrying on of the decisions of uh, the, 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 the chief executive. That is why I always tell people that the worst person to be a president uh, is a minister, or the worst person to be a governor is a commissioner. Because as a minister or as a commissioner, you are a professional yes man. You don't have an opinion. You don't know what it means to take an executive decision. Yours is to endorse the, the decision of your boss. And, and he wants to do this, he says, sir, you know, jump and you're like, how high? So these are people who have not been put in taking executive decisions, which is the work of Mr. President or of a governor. These are points we really need to start to interrogate because that's why we keep having the wrong set of people. Oh, he has experience. What experience? Does he have relevant experience? What's relevant experience to the office? So it goes back, we would not have this issue in real terms of who is a, 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 a vice president, whether is a Muslim or, or a Christian, because it really doesn't matter. But the second part, which is justice should not only be served, but be seen. That perception, perception is reality. Just know that number one is a Muslim, number two is a Christian. It gives something to the psyche of the people, especially at a time like this, when we are so fragmented and divided as a nation, not on, 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 on economic uh, basis, but largely on religious basis. So it's not really an expedient time for you to give that analogy or that discussion of, oh, it doesn't matter, because really in the mindset of the people, it matters. That is the problem number one, numero uno, that we are having in the South East. They feel that we are not a part of the system. Those are some of them are even advocating secession. So this are, if you are coming and in as a president, you are giving the first body language that, you know, you know, a kind of sensitivity to the different dynamics of, of different sections, whether it's tribal sentiment or religious 
sentiment or ethnic sentiment that you are impervious to it. And it's a very bad body language to start with. For whatever is worth, you know, I want to say something about PDP and APT. Now, to win an election, the PDP presidential uh, 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 candidate, by perception and public, by public perception, he would have been better off going with um, uh, Obong um, uh, Wike. But I think that having been a vice president, he is thinking of somebody that would be able to play the role of a vice president and maybe underestimating the humility capacity of Mr. Wike. So he settles for uh, my, my Oga um, Okowa. So, so while, while Atiku is thinking in terms of administration, how we can run effective administration, I think my, my Oga Tinubu is thinking in terms of winning an election. You know, it's like when we get to that river, we cross it, let's get to that river first. It makes sense within logical argument, but when you are running a system, a governance system, you need to be sensitive to all the dynamics. Could he have gotten the, 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 the buy in the goodwill of Shetima, his financial watches, where Tinubu does not have to be the sole financier, so to speak, we have gotten it based on a certain arrangement when he still works with somebody that is a Christian from the north. You know, there has to be, you can't tell me that there's no Christian that is of influence or consequence in the north. So, Ezekiel, you yeah, I took, you, in all of this, it's okay to say that this is not a Nigerian course, it's not a Nigerian project, that all that you have mentioned. I, I have I have a personal challenge with respect to how expedient that choice is, but in terms of um, in terms of logical argument, you know the vice president is a spare tire. Today our vice president is a pastor, not just a Christian. But to what extent is he given the latitude? So you can get a vice president; it doesn't make him there. He's there and he's there. But, but, but Ezekiel, yeah, I took that's an aside. It feels like you're contradicting yourself, but we'd like to move. Not really that you are, but if you say that the major issue is that people feel not part of the system, they feel marginalized, and that's why you have all of the movement for secession. And so if that's the case, how do you then say this is a Nigerian project? We understand that as a vice president, as a governor of a state, you can be highly placed and you can be a professor. But, you know, your, your importance is, is, is as good as nothing because you, you would follow the beatings and the doing, uh, you know, the orders of, your, uh, of the superior or the president. Let's not say superior now. Uh, but that's what it is. But let's move away from that, Ezekiel, quickly. No, 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 no. It's important that we say something. No, no. I mean, we're out of time now. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I am a student of intellectualism. I've drawn a line between two things. Intellectually, the man is at liberty to take the person if he can win election and put it above an administration. He's at liberty to take a person if he can win election above the sentiment of the nation. Intellectually, he's at liberty. That's one point I said. But in terms of leadership, the feeling of the people is important. That's why I say, though all things are lawful, in this case, it is not expedient. So I'm not contradicting myself. I'm being very much on the point. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to continue with uh, the other thoughts. But I'm hoping that... The it bishops would... that, that, that were disguised. Not necessarily, not... but the, the power, the national greed, and the fact that the new NMPC uh, might just be the hope for uh, guaranteeing, uh, you know, energy security for the country. But let's see how that pans out. And let's also see what happens... Uh, if we say that everyone wants to become president and governor, but they fail to recognize the things that constantly influence our election and influence us as a country, we are not living our truth. We constantly don't tell ourselves the truth. Religion and ethnicity constantly influence, you know, the election every other time. And it's high time that we accept it and live by it. That's so much we can take. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. We appreciate you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Ezekiel Yaitouk is a public affairs analyst. He's also a governorship candidate uh, in Akwaibom State.
I'm sure that someday we'll talk about, you know, his ambition and his plan if he becomes governor of the state. Well, that's it this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll head straight to our first major conversation right here. Please stay with us. <music>